All right. So I know Breakout was absolutely terrible the last time that we played it on the channel. But this time, this time will be different, right? Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today Matthew H. has challenged us to play with a rather unusual Painter's Servant combo decklist. So, Painter's Servant is normally used with Grindstone as a way to infinitely and quickly mill out your opponent, and the deck is often built in a way so that you put Painter on blue, so that cards like Red Elemental Blasts can serve as counterspells and sort of vindicates for whatever problems you are facing. And that gives you a lot of flexibility. Today's deck list, though, is brewed around Life Force. So, we are instead going to be putting our Painter on black during this league, with the idea that Life Force can allow us to counter every spell for the rest of the game once we untap with Life Force. However, there's going to be some major sacrifices made in playing this versus playing something like a Pyroblast, and I think the kind of baseline thing that we should talk about here is mana. So Pyroblast is one mana. Pyroblast can target a spell, it can target a permanent, so it serves as both a counter spell and a removal spell, and a very flexible one at that. And the thing about your Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blasts is that a huge chunk of the legacy format is just blue. So even if you don't have your painters out, that card has real text. Well, Life Force costs you four mana to counter your first spell. And that is a very bad rate for a legacy counter spell. Most of the time when you counter something in legacy, you are doing it for free. You are pitch casting a force of will, you are returning an island to your hand two days, and if you are playing a counter spell that you play pay mana for, oftentimes it's one for a card like Flusterstorm. So we are intentionally going into this deck, into this league, trying to do something cute. And we know that ahead of time. We're looking to have fun and maybe counter a few spells this way. So in my challenge for just brewing around life force, this is what I came up with. And number one, I don't think you can play that many copies of life force. This is a green green card which requires green green to activate in a mana base that wants both Urza's Saga and Ancient Tomb just as four of uh, just unquestionably. You, you need four of both of those cards. So like this is not a card that my mana base can play early, so we can't run very many copies of it. And to make the green good, I thought we needed some acceleration. We need a way to cheat more green pips into this deck, because even if I max out on taigas at the cost of like basic mountains, we still just don't have that many green sources, even counting things like Lotus Petal. So the Hierarchs are going to help out with that. And from there, I wanted Breakout as a pseudo tutor for like painter and goblin engineer and goblin welder and i've seen some painter tech just like jamming a couple of tarmogoyfs into the list as just another thing to help beat down and that seems reasonable to me and we'll kind of see how this plays out we do lose on a lot of the flexibility that this painter deck normally has by getting rid of pyroblasts and red elemental blasts but like Life Force occupies the same niche, so I don't really think that I can get away with both while still having like a high enough creature count. Um, so we'll we'll see how this does. Uh, I'm unsure how Moloch is going to feel in this deck. Um, I've been somewhat impressed by Moloch in seeing it in action, but this is competing with Fury, which is kind of a really good card for main deck slots. I've still got some Furies in the sideboard and a handful of relatively powerful things. Uh, I do have a commercial district as a fifth Taiga in here, um, and the Surveil is like definitely relevant with the Welders and Engineers. So yeah, let's, let's see if this is another breakout disaster or if the card can redeem itself this time around. Um, over, under, on number of cards that we actually counter with a life force. You know, 
if we resolve and untap with it, you know, there's a very good chance that I will just win the game. But, you know, something like opponent casts a spell, life force, attempt to counter it. Oh, I lightning bolt your painter servant in response. Now the spell isn't black anymore and your life force did nothing. He is, I think, more likely to be in our future. But let's give it the old college try. The old three and you try. And if you decide you need some life force or, you know, maybe like some Molochs or something like that, consider checking out toamagic.com. That's Tales of Adventure. And they are an awesome store. If you're looking to get everything from one store, one envelope, instead of from a whole bunch of retailers, check them out and use promo code THRABENU when you do to save 5% on your order. Let's battle. So I've kept my opening hand here. And the question is, like, do I lead on Urza Saga Ancient Tomb? Or do I, like, lead on Goblin Welder, Goblin Engineer? Like, how do I want to go about this? I think I'm just going to lead on the Urza Saga. It's possible that I should just fetch Taiga, play Goblin Welder, and, like, use this stuff to bait out initial, like, removal and wastelands, and then try to ride Urza Saga to victory a little bit later. Let's do that. Like, in playing Painter... I'm not really in a hurry. And without extra artifacts in this hand, I don't know that I just want to turbo in on Urza's Saga. Sure. Okay. Hierarch is interesting. I cast a card, it's dazable this turn. I think I'm okay with that if I do this. Just like attempt a goblin engineer. All right, there is a surveil junking a delver. My opponent likes their card. Margins on this game might be tight enough that I just make an attack with this. There's no danger of this becoming a 3-3 right now. And, ooh. So multiple surveils here could mean that I'm taking a decent amount of damage. My opponent needs to, like, find a sorcery or a creature. They will know my next draw. No... Uh, that's rough. So I'll take one here. I don't really want to tap this Ancient Tomb. And I guess I'm not. Uh, three card types in Graveyard. I probably just attack with this. And then go Urza Saga Tarmogoyf. 17. I think I have a Shadow Spear in this deck. Shadow Spear plus Tarmogoyf would be sweet. Yeah... Can't really jam Ancient Tomb this turn, though, to, like, play around days. I need to get this Urza Saga ticking up. Like, that's my way to stabilize, or at least attempt to, from taking six points of damage per turn cycle. Fuck me! Oh, no. Oh, what a disaster. Oh, that is certainly a choice that you are allowed to make. I liked the part where my opponent did not kill my Urza Saga. That part was good for me. That was very greedy. Send it. 16. Okay. So my opponent could have Lightning Bolt here. If I Lightning Bolt in... If, if I make this Construct Token in combat and attempt to trade with one of these creatures and I get Lightning Bolted, I might take 6 instead of 2. So I am going to take 2. And I am fine like losing life for the Ancient Tomb here. Because I am I have no artifacts in my graveyard, which is like slightly awkward. Stifle, sure. It was not lightning bolt, it was stifle instead. So my search has gone away, which is super inconvenient. I'm going to play one of these, assuming that getting extra colored sources into play actually does something. Uh, this attack by itself is 3 damage, and so is the attack with both of them. I'll just attack with one creature and leave one more back. My opponent has really covered my Urza Saga... Sagas well. Sure. Alright, these are now 3-3s. Three I need to draw something relevant or I am just going to die. Don't think I can reasonably race my opponent. Uh, sure. That just goes to my face and I die now. Yep. Dead. Breakout. Would have looked at six. 
HD Tarmogoy 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that doesn't even quite do it. All right, um, I, need, I need Pick Your Poison. And then there's a pretty large number of cards that are actively good. I can't really Life Force versus the Wasteland Tempo deck. Like, my mana is not safe. And this is so slow to get online, it's not viable here. What is not good? The combo is significantly less good if my opponent's packing a bunch of Stifle. I think I'm going to turn two Hierarchs into two Carpet of Flowers. I think I need all of those. That's probably cuttable. I don't think I'm going to choke. All four of these cards are playable. My artifact count's kind of low. I don't have artifact lands in here since I needed to get taigas in, or rather I don't have many of them since I needed to get taigas in. Harper Flowers Moloch is a thing. Um, this is a medium hand that I think I'm just going to keep. Let's attempt to just bait a Force of Will out with this. Cool. And then I just kind of hope that the top of the deck does reasonable things for me. The Carpet of Flowers may not make mana immediately, but it will make more mana in the long run. It also just makes Wastelands and Friends less devastating. That's not what I'm looking for. Make some green mana. I think I'm just going to surveil this turn. No. And Moloch is, I think, a removal spell rather than something that I just jam immediately. All right, now we have a target for Moloch. My opponent is playing a Stifle deck, though, so like that's a thing. Tarmogoyf. Don't mind if I do. Let's make some green mana. I will play a Lotus Pebble. Put an artifact land into play. Just do it for one. Like play it, attempt to remove, remove Delver. I don't know, like Stifle is very good against this trigger. If I just do this as a 3-3, three, three, it's not actually that great. I'm going to do this for X's 3 instead. I'll play around days, but... I want to be better versus Stifle. And this makes the Carpet of Flowers much better. Hydroblast. Yeah. Uh, this is fine. Like, that interaction put multiple card types in the graveyard for Tarmogoyf. Sure. Telver flips to Meltdown. Rough. That makes the playing out the Artifact Land much worse. Didn't even get to, like, value Grindstone myself to grow Tarmogoyf like I wanted to. Such is life. Stop fucking drawing lands, Phil. You don't need those. You really don't need those. Alright, 5-6, big booty Tarmogoyf. Oh damn, we're in play. Some big mana play. Marktide, I guess? It is Marktide. And that has the frustrating downside of shrinking my Tarmogoyf. It's still outside of bolt range, which I guess is nice, but I'm probably just going to die. I'll make some red... We'll play the Goblin Engineer. Goblin Engineer can't bring back Chaos Defiler. I also don't have an artifact to get it going. I could put the Shadow Spear in there and try to, like, Shadow Spear Tarmogoyf my way out of this shit. That might be the plan. I'm just, I'm just dead in two turns to Marktide over there. Yeah, fill the graveyard back up. Make my Tarmogoyf bigger. Sort of frustratingly, since my opponent has two flyers, pick your poison doesn't kill these right now. All right, now my opponent gets to prepare to kill me. I, I, I think a force of will just does it. I think if my opponent can force, I just can't beat what they're doing. Double wasteland is a thing. Uh, sure. Nine here. And there's another threat coming. Uh, Painter is not going to do it. Painter does not fly. I am dead here. GG's. Today's video is sponsored by Voxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Okie dokie. I've kept my hand, hoping that Moloch is good. 
if my opponent is playing creatures and I just have like a couple of Molochs, Molochs and a giant Tarmogoyf, like this hand is reasonable. If my opponent's playing something like combo, like we're, we're dead in the water to them. Uh, at least the Tarmogoyf gets bigger. Files, the Tarmogoyf did not get bigger. Um, I don't really care if this painter goes to the graveyard. I don't think I'm going to play around days. I think I'm just going to grab another Taiga and painter. Uh, yep, that's fine. We'll do some little love taps with Goblin Welder. Um, again, none of these things are artifacts. Like Going into the green to play extra creatures at the cost of extra artifacts may just not have been an acceptable thing to do. A Traxa randomly gets surveilled the graveyard. Fuck me. Okay. I don't think I'm playing around days. Okay, I'm going to surveil myself. I don't want to draw that. I will play a Tarmogoyf. I'll bash in for some damage. I'm fine against fair creatures, but if my opponent just has the reanimate or the animate dead, I, I don't keep up with that. And I will have to like pivot into a combo win, which is really tough right now. That's magic, baby. Opponent can get Force of Will here. They can get Bowmasters to ping my Welder. Yeah, they can take Force of Will Ponder, so they have a guaranteed blue pair for that. Force of Will Ponder, Wasteland, Bowmasters. And I get Griefed as well. The Atraxa randomly being on top was a disaster. We could have gotten double griefed anyway this turn. I don't think I care about that with the Tarmogoyf in play. Oh, yes, we drew we drew life force. Excellent. I guess I'm playing it in an attempt to bait force of will. That's a weird thing to say. I like life force is just not going to keep up with this wasteland in terms of like allowing me to continue to play spells. All right, it's in play. I can make a land drop. I can't activate it. I'll pass the turn here. If I can get the Force of Will to leave my opponent's hand, I can maybe do something kind of cool with Moloch and take the Atraxa out of play with a Tarmogoyf block or something. Or, a, like, my opponent blocks the Tarmogoyf. Um, but this is a disaster. And because we're trying to play additional creatures like Tarmogoyf, we don't have Ensnaring Bridge as a silver bullet. Yeah, yeah. And I get Wastelanded. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to play a Painter. It's going to get countered. Then my opponent just doesn't block Tarmogoyf. Or chump blocks with an Orc. Uh, yeah, this is not happening. Uh, we're probably going to end up sideboarding similarly as with the previous round. Uh, pick your poisons are quite good. The Soul Guide Lantern is more important this time, although my opponent may or may not have the like Entomb package available for this game. Fine with carpet. I don't think I'm going to go this deep. I could consider this. So life force is still bad. Like despite the fact that my opponent is a black deck, like against a tempo deck, life force does nothing against the cards that are already in play. We can't do it. Two of these hierarchs are going to become carpet of flowers. Let's go dragon engine out. That gets me these. I need this one too. Maybe I'll go down a welder. Again, my artifact count is kind of light here. We, we still just have like the dream Chaos Defile or Welder shenanigans, but I am very much feeling the cost of going into another color and trying to make that second color worth it. Or really third, because like Chaos Defiler exists. Uh, yeah, I guess. I definitely feel a little vulnerable here in terms of like resources. It's pretty easy for me to be taken off of relevant mana. My opponent is pausing after fetching Underground Sea, like they have options. But they did push. Uh, sure. So, this is what I was talking about. Like, now I am taken off of green-red at the same time, which means my Molochs are not castable. And so I'm going to lose the one castable card in my hand and probably not do much for a little while. But that was a damn good top deck. We are happy with that. Oh, no further land drop. Uh, that is excellent for me. Unless my opponent, like, end of turn entombs into reanimates. 
Ooh, they didn't. Why did my opponent keep their hand? It is kind of my current question. Yeah. Goblin Welder is also just like a perfectly fine thing to cast here. I think I'm just going to pick Soul Guide Lantern up. Like, Shadow Spear is awesome and everything, but the easiest way for me to die is just my opponent creating a giant creature. And I would like that to not happen. 16. This Goblin Welder isn't, like, exactly good. You know, it'll die to a Bowmaster ping. My opponent can, like, counter it, fatal push it, whatever. And I don't technically have an artifact in Graveyard yet, but I could. It is an Entomb. My opponent entombs a Troll. My Welder gets dazed. Uh, this is all acceptable. My opponent can't, like, reanimate and then stifle a Soul Guide Lantern activation as of right now. That's pretty bad for me, but my opponent is somewhat significantly behind on board. They are taking 6 damage per turn cycle, which quickly turns off the reanimate style cards. Um, hopefully we get there before my opponent does something broken. Uh, they don't have a lot of time, but it is possible, you know, that they could just fatal push, dismember, snuff out their way out of this spot. Because removing one of these drastically changes the clock. Uh, yep, that's fine. Because of land drop into Merktide Regent, I should consider activating Soul Guide Lantern here. That turns both of these into two twos. If my opponent has to, or no, they don't have to fetch because they have Underground Sea in hand. Like if my opponent just plays a Merktide Regent, it walls my creatures. I'm just going to pass priority here. All right, it is just a land drop. I mean, I have basically one legal game action here. Turn them sideways. Uh, yep, and that's kind of what I was expecting. So a ping plus a double block kills one of these. My opponent goes to one. This is now lethal. Another Bowmasters is very good against this. Marktide is very good against this. Okay, my opponent just died. Uh, I feel like we got a little lucky there. Like, my opponent still has five cards in hand and just could not beat a 2-2. Two -two. Maybe on the draw, I adjust things further. Like, Welders aren't great versus Bowmasters. Engineer not bringing back Chaos Defiler is a little rough. Like, I can play a little bit more removal. I could become resilient versus Wasteland. I also could choke my opponent. If they're going to keep slower hands, like, this is not irrelevant. Not like these are great. But even play a couple of fairies to just like not get got in the early game and try to reach the mid game. I don't really know how I am supposed to treat this here. I'm just kind of uncomfortable without my pyroblasts. Uh, this is a pretty good hand. You know, it has it has very obvious strengths and weaknesses. We're soft to a fast reanimation. We're not soft to slower reanimation. I can get graveyard hate with this. So that's a few turns out. Well, we are getting griefed. Opponent, you may take my one valid card. And they do. That's not a bad draw. I, 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 I think I very clearly know what the plan is, though. Like, more than anything else, I need to just do this for the graveyard hate. Okay, it's not in Tomb. All right, it is a troll for Undercity Sewers. Sure. I mean, I'm very happy to see that troll is not just immediately coming into play. That's honestly kind of huge for me. Uh, Hierarch doesn't do anything for a while, I don't think. So this is the big turn. This is the turn that I have to dodge Graveyard Hate, and if I do... I am golden, or sorry, uh, dodge a reanimation spell, and if I do, I'm golden. Nope. Yep. I might be able to outmuscle that with Shadow Spear. I take a lot of damage to this Ancient Tomb over the course of this game. Um, I, I am going to continue making the Construct tokens. And I think I am going this route now. Yep. It's possible that I play Hierarch in this turn cycle. I'll take some damage here. 
Sure. I maybe don't out damage my opponents anymore. Okay. That's not great. All right, my opponent goes for the Ancient Tomb, leaving me with the Urza Saga. I am unsure whether or not that is a good or bad idea. Like, the Ancient Tomb cost me life to do things like equip this. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt an equip. I will bash in for 7, regain 4. And this Urza Saga getting me an extra artifact might end up becoming relevant. So, like, this is 8, then 16. And I'll probably be going back up to, like, 20. Another removal spell will probably do it. Er? Feels like to me you ponder before the attack. Because, like, removal spell plus Delthy Voidwalker could do some weird... Uh, I guess they're not removing the Shadow Spear, actually. It's probably fine. Okay. So... I'm always floating mana. Soul Guide Lantern seems reasonable. Snag my opponent's grief just in case. While I've got the floating mana, I am going to go ahead and Fable. Uh, we're good as long as this creature connects, but I can't do anything to change it connecting. If my opponent's got a Fatal Push or whatever, um, they are going to win here. Uh, cool, they don't. Nine damage. More importantly, I gain the five. My opponent's at two. I think Trample is likely to get me there. Sure. All right, my opponent tanked for a minute and is now going to hold the troll back. That's fine. I am at nine. I am threatening to gain five-ish more in combat. Uh, Moloch is cool. We're probably not playing that spell, though. This turn could get a little weird. I think I am just going to be making an Urza Saga token more or less, no matter what. Bowmaster, that's fine. So Bowmaster pings my bigger one. So this still has five power, so even if I make my Urza Saga construct token right now, that doesn't save this, so... Oh, I guess uh, the Trample is relevant, though. So I will go one bigger. This takes my opponent off of Force of Will and Fetch Lands. Brainstorm's fine. I don't really know what my opponent's looking for at this point, um, to be honest. I mean, Wasteland's not bad, but I have two onboard creatures, so you have to Wasteland me and then sack Douthy Voidwalker or a Fable of the Mirror Breaker to have two blockers. But then the onboard... Trample still kills you. Um, so does a Moloch for that matter. Land drop. Shadow Spear. Equip. Trample confirmed. Good. And we do put a match win on the board, but um, I don't think it was the, the life force that got the win there. All right. Uh, this one's awkward. I can't cast Breakout. I can't cast Moloch. I have um, Grindstone and painter but the hand just kind of feels unstable it's improved by a decent number of draws such as just a colored mana source but i think i am just going to mulligan and try to find something a little bit more consistent uh this is neat i actually think i like this one a lot okay so we've got a ley line of the guild pact in play over there i don't have a basic in this deck because i needed to fit in five tigers the game plan is play fable discard chaos defiler to fable bring back chaos defiler with welder like that is the plan uh my opponent's pretty likely to break it up they're probably going to be a source of plowshares leyline binding style deck yeah f in chat uh, we'll still fable to loot the chaos defiler into the graveyard Seems like opponent does not have counter spells. That's a damn good spell to counter. I can also just hard cast the Chaos Defiler. Like, if this gets to attack once and I get that fifth treasure token, that's just a perfectly reasonable thing to do. All right. That sure has a lot of words on it. First Strike, Hexproof, Lifelink, Trample, Vigilance, Flying. I'm definitely using this ability. 
I'm going to get rid of this. And I think this. Sure. Play this. Go to combat. Make my treasure. My opponent blocks. That's fine. We knew that was happening. And now we Chaos Defiler. And I can choose to destroy the Scion. Either one of these, I think, is a reasonable choice. I'm just going to take the creature out of play. I will leave my opponent with the Ley Line. I, I think I just physically want the blocker out of play. Uh, that's fine. So, this is a fun one. If I can destroy that Ley Line Binding later, I just get this back. My opponent has produced a new friend. Not the biggest fan of that. Sure. So is the best use of my mana Urza Saga? Yes. No? Oh, it's got two cards. I can just play Painter. Get Grindstone next turn. Next turn, attempt to kill my opponent. Or I can grind my Urza Saga value and surprise my opponent a little bit later on. I think I'm going to go for the combo. Everything is black. kind of want another land. Broadside is rough. Opponent's deck is a little more aggro than I was expecting. Opponent's going to discard to draw. All right, so my opponent's just going to throw their creature. Don't have a possible block here because menace is a thing. Now I need to go ahead and remove this creature. I think I'm just ignoring Urza's Saga value completely. I guess I don't need to float the Ancient Tomb mana before this ability resolves. Oh? Or do you have like a Fatal Push in addition to this? Or oh, you're just fetching to... I see. Play around Pithing Needle. I'm going to Lotus Petal. Red. Green. One. One? Do this like this, leaving one floating. Moloch can fight here. I win the fight. Or Reflection of Kiki-Jiki with the last mana. Moloch will not fight. Send in for two. And then this Moloch goes away. So now I have a Moloch to just like Moloch on recursion to take out normal creatures for the rest of the game. A Territorial Kavu. Uh, sure. New Moloch. Can't cast that. Can't cast Breakout. I think I'm just going to play a Fable here. Um, it's definitely slightly awkward. But I think I just need the extra colored mana here uh, to get myself over the finish line. Honest creatures are so big that, like, Moloch doesn't just immediately kill them. I'm also just, like, one leyline binding away from scary times. Also, like, it's turn six, and in no world would I want to draw a life force. Just throwing that out there. All right, my opponent can junk a painter from my graveyard, which is relevant. If I double block here and my opponent has a source of plowshares, I basically lose on the spot. His life is so valuable, though. Am I beating a removal spell anyway? Maybe I'm not beating a removal spell anyway. Let's try this. Oh, wow, it looks like combat damage went through. I honestly was not expecting that. A new breakout. Yes, I'm going to loot away at least one of those. I'm going to keep one and loot away these two. I have other things that I would like to, in theory, draw. Casting a spell pre-combat is weird. Like, breakout's haste is super relevant, but if my opponent has force of will blue card and then draws into a removal spell, it's awkward. So just know that I am making this decision understanding that. But, you know, this could be a hasty Tarmogoyf that gets to swing in. Wall. Send it. All right, opponent's at 12. I think I'm fine casting Painter for two life. Everything's black. All right, happy to see lands. Fable does Fable stuff. Uh, at this point, I'm crashing in with everything, and I'm hoping something sticks. I am very afraid. Bowmasters. Ping in my face. Okay, it's just some chumps. Opponent's at nine. I can copy Moloch and kill Bowmasters next turn. Am I dead? Am I just dead to that? Uh, that sucks. Broadside attack with menace for two. Throw territorial Kabu for four. Oh, that's disappointing. 
It's Xaxes. All right. So given what I have seen of my opponent's deck now, like now that I know what build they are on and they're not as controlling, they're more aggro. Like in the early game, I wish I would have taken out the Leyline. Now I know. So like Fury, Choke's very funny with Leyline. I guess Carpet of Flowers would work the same way, huh? A Wire Might's playable. Pithing Needle is playable. I have a lot of playables. How am I winning? My opponent largely has the better creatures in combat. My opponent has the better card advantage. My opponent has the better removal. So, like, am I planning on a combo finish? Probably. My welders and engineers aren't great versus this giant pile of white removal. Welder is bad versus bowmasters. What if I do this? Get these in here. Get these in here. Moloch Carpet of Flowers is a thing. This gets rid of the Leyline. Um, bindings and Leyline of the Guild Packs. 20 creatures. Breakout starts to maybe get worse. Yang, yang. This, this feels like a mess. Badlands Carpet of Flowers combo. One Badlands for Chaos Defile are super punishing here. Otherwise, this hand is keepable to good. Uh, I guess I'm keeping this. There's no way I can keep this with Badlands as my land. Ugh. Like, this is... This is bad here. This is worse. Alright, opponent has a ley line. We're gonna Taiga. And then we're just gonna preemptively shut off Broadside. I just don't want to have to deal with that degree of removal and clock. All right. Uh, awkward. I think I'm just going to cast the breakout this turn. Sometimes this just misses with the number of creatures that I have cut. I would, in fact, be ecstatic if this just got like Force of Wilder Hydro Blasted or whatever. Oh, it's looking. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, they found the blue elemental blast a little bit too late. Surgical Extraction on Breakout. Uh, seems like probably poor timing. You can wait until my draw step to do that. Unless you need the information right now to inform your decisions. Oh, my opponent does not have more land. That's not great for them. Urza Saga. Force of Vigor before this produces mana is a bit of a kick in the teeth. So it goes. All Painter. Everything's black. I need a land drop to attempt choke. Well, I guess I'm glad I didn't choke this turn. All right. Land drop, land drop, land drop. Nice. Uh, slam choke. Like, opponent only has one land, but every land that they have will no longer untap. So they will need some sort of Leyline Binding style card to take this out. Otherwise, their hot tech backfires. Um, really awkward that that's not an untapped land. Moloch is an above average draw. I'll happily keep that. We're going to go ahead and attempt Chaos Defiler here. I will destroy your Leyline Binding. Get my Painter back. Everything's black. My opponent has one land. Their one land does not untap. They're facing down six power a turn, soon to be more. <laughs> my opponent's uh, ETV tapped land was much worse than mine. Uh, carpet's cool. Carpet doesn't quite make Moloch cantrip. Right, one, two, one, two, three, four. I'll probably wait one turn on Moloch then. I'll think about it though. So my opponent's at 11. One, two... Three, four, plus one, plus one counters. So six, eleven. Oh, it's just lethal next turn. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll play it then. X is four. No violence. Oh, it is a leyline binding. So my opponent can get rid of the choke to untap their lands, but there's still multiple giant bodies on the field. Green verdict can't happen. Uh, you have a five-five. Shadow spear is quite funny. Like some black mana. Cast a Shadow Spear. My opponent blocks Chaos Defiler. 
and trades even if Shadow Spear goes on. If I equip here, I get one more damage through 6, 7, 8 damage versus... Well, I guess I get the one damage no matter what. Uh, let's just put it on the Moloch then. Uh, send it, send it. I don't think I'm going to try to get cheeky for the one painter damage. Yes. So this is sweet. Chaos Defiler dies. I get rid of Leyline Binding. And this is back in play. Leyline of the Guild Pact. Confirmed good. I do have to win another game, though. Seems like the plan of win with enchantments is reasonable. I don't like the math on my breakouts. I don't know. I think this is a perfectly reasonable hand. Urza Saga, Pithing Needle, Broadside. Um, into Ancient Tomb, start activating Urza Saga, get Grindstone, Grindstone Painter, win somehow. Like, try to make my opponent exhaust their resources dealing with Urza Saga and then actually plan on winning with this later on. Opponent does not start with a ley line this time. Another painter. Sure. I am just going to start this way. Uh, we do know that my opponent is playing Force of Vigor. But shutting this off while it is mania, mana convenient for me to do so matters a lot. For sure. All right, my opponent has a card advantage engine in play. I guess so do I. Uh, so we'll see if we can ride this to victory. My mana's a little awkward over the next few turns. The ETB tapped Greenland is rough here. This is the fetch to shuffle. Probably get the Xander's Lounge to kind of fill out the colors for Leyline Binding. Uh, that's not bad. Like, I'm perfectly happy with that. The ETB tapped land, again, is awkward. Okay, yeah, there's the Xander's Lounge. Also awkward because of Haywire Might. I think I'll just pick up Grindstone. So let's crash in. 15. And then we'll commercial district. Ah, uh, that's weird. The problem here is my opponent's creatures are so effing big that if I just, you know, take eight damage off of Ancient Tomb, I think there's a very real chance that I just end up dying to my own cards. So despite that the Ancient Tomb is pretty good in the short term, I think I just don't do that. Carpet of Flowers, eh? That extra green mana matters. Like, matters a lot. So let's cast this. Okay. I think now I send in. I don't think I play pre-combat painter to increase the amount of damage that I'm doing. I, I think I just want my opponent to, like, use spells and react to what I'm doing and then maybe get got. Yeah. I don't want that hitting the painter. All right. They're at 12. Yes, I will use this ability. I will make some green mana. Two mana for Painter. Three mana for Activate. I can also pick your poison first. I want to cast this. Please sacrifice an enchantment. Nice, nice. This is what I want to see. So I force the interaction on this in hopes of this actually being good. Eh. Okay. Force pitching force, though, is nice. Should... Uh, I don't know. I was going to activate in upkeep. I, I think I'm just not going to use this mana and be okay with this. And I've got some pretty good options moving forward. So you get three mana from carpet, so five mana is lethal. I've got two other mana to work with. Sure, sure, sure. Were you tapping out? That's not... how oh, it's meltdown. That does not bring me joy. All right. That's real good. I still have carpet. But now Painter is bad. Uh, yes, let's add a bunch of red. So let's play the world's thickest Moloch. Moloch for x equals 6. Nice. We are not fighting anybody. I am Ravenous, so I'll draw a card. Pick your poison is solid. Uh, Moloch plus Ignoble Hierarch is sort of humorously lethal. Although I'm not expecting this creature to make it around the table. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Ooh. Make green. Pick your poison. Enchantment. And this probably gets the up the beanstalk. 
I've seen three of the four copies of Force of Will. Oh no, I get the Moloch back. Okay. Happy enough with that. I will break out. This is where I want like a hasty Tarmogoyf. Blue Elemental Blast. Got it. I'll Painter. Everything is black. I'll drop a Noble Hierarch that I don't expect to do much, but again, we do have some mana sinks like Moloch. All right, I get swords. My opponent has one card left. Uh, that's not really what I want at this stage. I'm playing it because it like attacks for one more power here. Uh, this makes me much safer versus something like Orcish Bowmasters. <laughs> Another Leyline Binding. All right, sure. So we are fully just in the game of who top decks better. And my opponent has an up the beanstalk and cantrips, and I don't. And they liked their card. Uh, that's bad for me. Uh, yep. Uh, this is a 4 4 flyer right now. We just have another one. Okay. Well, that was a hell of a swing. All lock. Oh. That's almost good. Problem here is that my opponent just has 9 power in play. So like, I might stop all their, well, most of their lands from untapping, but I still have to kill them. And this does get some abilities. Um, the trample here is notable. Did it already have trample? Looks like no. My opponent junks the last force of will. Yep. Um, I, I need another relevant spell. Not dead to this next turn. I am dead to it if my opponent like has something like a Bowmaster. Ah, joy. It is Life Force. Green. I will cast Life Force. Doesn't cast Life Force. Wall. All right, send in. I am, in theory, one point of life away from death. A breakout for a Tarmogoyf can get me there. The opponent gets to loot again with Territorial Kabu. Yep, yep. Junk a ley line. I am just going to take this damage. Uh, sure. All right, fuck, I could have countered that. Or no, it's not black. I don't have painter. Yeah, that's why this card's bad. <laughs> it doesn't do anything without painter. Uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Uh, both of these trample. I have four total toughness. This is not going to get me there. Uh, we are dead. I needed life force to be a card that was not life force. <laughs> All right, we are keeping this hand on the strength of Fable of the Mirror Breaker on turn two, uh, looting through these extra copies of Ancient Tomb. I got a Surveil Land on turn one to kind of help select for just literally any other spell. I just don't want to draw additional lands. If the Fable doesn't resolve, though, uh, I am in not great shape. All right, let's Surveil Land... Uh, yeah, that's totally fine. Now we have a second one for if the first one gets countered. That's kind of a big deal. Huzzah. And the first one does get countered. Uh, pitching a Traxa, so we're probably playing against Riscaminator again. So we could just get reanimated on here. In which case, my Ancient Tomb is a real liability. Sure. Chaos Defiler. I don't quite have mana for that yet. I'm not that far away. I don't have that many red sources. I guess I have a Moloch that costs me a gajillion life. This could be my black source as well. Kind of see how this next turn cycle goes. Like, if I don't think my opponent has a counterspell, I just, like, YOLO Moloch. Oh my god, don't do it again. Stop. Stop it. Sure. Uh, yes, discard an ancient tomb, discard a grindstone. Am I playing around days? Arid Mesa plus ancient tomb. I take three points of damage. Putting me to six, leaving me dead to the left troll. So, I think... We are going to cast a Chaos Defiler, go to six, hope that it removes this creature, and then next turn, 
Never mind. We're fucking dead. Yeah. Du double troll, double force of will. Confirmed good. Um, yeah, you know, we, we had the, the tools to remove this stuff, but not the time. So I think I like this. I think I did these. I think I did carpets for these. I think I ended up junking this. Then I decided I didn't like these verses. Bowmasters, and then I had cut enough stuff where these didn't make sense anymore. It gives me this, this, pithing needle, some furies as fair removal. And I think I did two fairies. I don't get got in the early game. I could do two chokes on the play. That's not crazy. Oh, there's also these. We just keep playing against tempo where it is not reasonable to keep these. I think that means some chokes. The, the blue black risk emanator deck is just one of the best decks in the format right now. It's not crazy that we are seeing it this much in leagues. My hand is pretty good. Slightly awkward, but pretty good. I get a surveil land at the end of my opponent's turn, and I'll have some choices for what I do from there. I think I'm not interested in Urza Saga in the short term. I think I'm trying to bait out some counter spells and then resolve a choke. And the Urza Saga is the plan for after I accomplish that commercial district. Um, Honestly, I'll take it. If I keep that, all my spells I ever play are played around days, and this contributes to an artifact count for Urza Saga if my stuff actually does end up resolving. I think the goal is to try to get this Force of Willed. Oh, it just resolved. Cool. I will probably slam a choke next turn then. Sure, sure, sure. This means that I'm not getting reanimated this turn, which is great. Would you like to fetch and tap another island? You would not like to tap another island. Ooh. Yes, I'm going to get rid of one of these. It's a little awkward to keep this many Urza Sagas. The Illusion of Choice. Send it. 16. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Second one's not played around days. If I take two more damage, I can jam another Fable and then a choke afterwards around days. Let's hope that's a good idea. Owie, owie, owie. Like, this potentially baits a Hydroblast, which taps the other land, which makes the choke better. All right, it resolved. Show me a Force of Will. Nope. Okay. Uh, life is hard for my opponent from here, because I have two of these things that can just keep attacking. Uh, cool. I don't even know that I want this Fury. Like, it's cute with this. I'll just keep it. I am going to have a bunch of treasure tokens. And in theory, the ability to cast them. Alright, opponent's at 12. I'll play a Saga. If I cast this, my opponent just, like, theoretically dies to it. I don't know that I want to cast it, though. Like, it feels like I'm good, and I can just hold this until I actually need to cast it. Like, if I hold it in hand, I can, in theory, like, cast a Fury, then Reflection of Kiki Jiki copy to remove something much larger. An Archon of Cruelty. Um, you got it. Opponent's at four. I'll sack a creature. I'll discard an Urza Saga. Um, hopefully my opponent does not Force of Will my Fury. Okay. So, one... Two, I, I think we'll just go three, four, five. The Urza Sagas are secondary here. Uh, hold on, let's just do a quick check. Do I have lethal by making an Urza Saga construct token and copying it? So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six power hasty thing. No? Okay. But I would like to not tap Ancient Tomb if possible. So we do this. I pay tapping Urza Saga. If the follow-up play is... Oh, this is weird. This, this two life matters because six plus three is nine. I'll tap Ancient Tomb. 
All right, Fury targets Archon for four damage. Reflection targets Fury for four damage. And we get there. We did nearly just lose, despite having taken our opponent off of all their mana sources, all their permanent ones. My opponent's going to keep the Entomb stuff in. I probably want the extra Fairy. Go down one Breakout. I could also go down one Hierarch reasonably. But, like, I have very good three drops that I do want to accelerate into. All right. I've kept my opening hand here. Um, we're really heavy on Urza Saga. This is a Sorcery Speed Brainstorm. Opponent might have a troll that they are planning on cycling to shuffle off of this. Or this Brainstorm could be incredibly important to find a second land and they're trying to play around a Pyroblast that I don't have. Was this the opponent who surgicaled me? Unsure. The rounds are blurring together. Um, regardless, I don't think my general plan is changing. Like, I know that I want to Urza Saga, and I know that I want to have the graveyard covered. Like, this is dazeable right now, but I don't really think I can play this in a way where I play it around days. This does kind of make my pair of Tarmogoyce worse. That is a Swamp. Prior to a ponder, which means that they can't ponder, take the best card, shuffle. That's kind of weird. Uh, they kept. So it seems like my Urza Saga is going to get to do Urza Saga things, uh, which is real good for me. All right, there is a troll. They've got Underground Sea. There's an attempted reanimate. I will exile each opponent's graveyard. We trade reanimate for Soul Guide Lantern. Now my opponent ponders. Maybe they're going to rebuild a graveyard for like a Murktide region or something. And a wasteland. They are going to go for my ancient tomb. Which means that I do get to Urza's saga, saga Tutor. I also just like drop a pretty decent sized Tarmogoyf into play. All right. Yeah. This honestly might just be Lotus Petal so that I play... Tarmogoyf's around days. I think it is. Yeah. Big old goyfy boy in play. This construct token is small. Um, this is not my actual threat. So the fear is now that my opponent has Entomb plus Reanimate or Animate Dead left over. I am not worried about like fair removal and fair creatures from my opponent. I would love to fable and loot for fairy. I don't know that I get to just like play this into days on my next turn though. Painter is a thing. Sure. There is not already a creature in graveyard. I think that means pre-combat Tarmogoyf. If it gets countered, Tarmogoyf is one bigger. Uh, this is six damage. One more turn and reanimate is off the table. Okay. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Free combat fable? Or no, there's already an enchantment in the graveyard. There is not a creature in the graveyard. I almost certainly want to play fable this turn, though. I, I think the looting is important to me, kind of solidifying this game. All right, reanimate is fully off the table. Got Badlands here, I guess. And let's pick up a Fable. All right. No use of mana from my opponent. I am a little confused about what they actually had in hand towards the end of that game. All right, I am not sure how I feel about this. I'm going to keep it. I think the hand has some problems. Like, we're, we're light on artifacts to do the Goblin Engineer thing, which means that we start the game on the Urza Saga Grindstone plan. But if I get Wastelanded, the hand's pretty bad. All right. Probably not blue-black Riscaminator. Probably. You don't know. The, the saucy wooded foothills in a blue-black deck. We could see it. So, no plays... From my opponent. I'm starting to think they might be a combo deck or something. Like Rhinos, maybe? 
Hey, I called it. Okay. So my opponent produces a bunch of stuff. And I'm just going to work towards Shadow Spear accidentally winning me this game. I guess. Not being a full painter deck and not having access to something like Ensnaring Bridge matters here. Um, although I would have trouble emptying my hand. I take 10 even if I Ancient Tomb. Does this even work? So I make a 2-2. Two, two, I make a 3-3. Three, three. It's a pair of 4-4s. Four, I take 10 plus 4, 14. Um, yeah, I guess this works. Kind of. I do not feel like this is moving towards success. Alright, there's another set of Crashing Footfalls suspended here. I would love to draw a Lotus Petal, I guess. That's a Scalding turn. So, three threes. This'll be four fours. Yeah. So I'll play a land... I will play a Goblin Welder. Oh, that's a super important Force of Will. It doesn't really look like it, but it is. So because my opponent Force of Will's that, I have to block both Rhinos. If the Goblin Welder lives, it can block Shardless Agent on the attack, and then I can take four, keep one of these around, and equip it. Uh, but that didn't happen. So now I have to block both Rhinos so that I don't die. Well, I guess I can block like this, go to two, right? This works, go to two, fetch to one. I have a three, three that becomes a four, four. Uh, yeah, I guess this works too. This works in a way that I have a body left over. Um, not really sure what we're doing about that though. Like that is just looming here. I'm probably dead to like a fire ice one way or another. Oh fuck, okay. Yeah, no. We are not beating that. My opponent just got out way in front of us here. My sideboard choices are not good here. This doesn't do enough. This kills one Rhino. My opponent doesn't play that many lands. Again, my opponent doesn't play that many lands. This, like, can hit a Merktide but doesn't do anything versus Rhinos. I think Needle can be okay versus some pivot plans. Like Minsk and Boo. I am not excited about this. I might not be sideboarding. Like, I think Ignoble Hierarch is better than Carpet of Flowers here. This is just always guaranteed turn two mana. Turn two, like, plus one mana. Whereas Carpet isn't if my opponent doesn't fetch. I might just need Fury to kill Rhinos anyway. Ugh. This, this just, like, does not line up well versus two Rhinos in a can. I'm going to keep the Life Forces in because it's the last round and we haven't countered anything with one yet. Uh, okay, question mark. I am going to kind of hope that accelerating this turn and then playing Breakout plus Urza Saga ends up being good. I, I don't feel like I am well positioned versus this deck. All right, Rhinos on Suspend. We're not facing down eight days here, so I am just going to play Breakout now before I make my land drop in case something weird happens. So I can do Painter's Servant with Haste or Phyrexian Dragon Engine to hand. We're going to choose Painter's Servant with Haste. It's on the battlefield. Everything is black. Well, Urza's Saga, that represents Grindstone in a little bit. I have to keep in mind that Force of Vigor is a thing that my opponent very reasonably could be playing here. Um, that's good. I have another Urza Saga, luckily. It may or may not be correct for my opponent to wasteland me, though. Like, they may use that mana in this turn cycle and then do something. Like, this feels like maybe Violent Outburst. I'm going to cast a, another Breakout just right now before making a land drop. Uh, Moloch's not the best. I will still put it onto the battlefield. No targets here. I think I'm just playing another Urza Saga. I think if I win this game, I'm winning this game as a combo deck, not as a fair deck, and I'm not even going to attack into what I think is a bunch of Rhinos. Yeah, that's Spirit Guide. And it is Violent Outburst. My opponent gets their Rhinos. They get to Wasteland this Urza Saga. And... 
I don't know that the second one will be fast enough. Like, it's very clearly the plan. I'll take this. Oh my god. Uh, that's disgusting. So how much is this? I don't have another artifact right now other than the painter servant. So I can tutor a grindstone to graveyard. All right, so let's say in theory I, I play this and I play this land. I tutor a grindstone to graveyard. I draw an artifact land. I have one, two, three, four mana, which is enough to do it and activate. It's also true if it's a zero cost artifact. I'm just thinking about whether or not it needs to be ancient tomb. If I take eight damage, I'm at four. I can only tap an ancient tomb once to make it so that I can artifact land and do my thing. Play this this turn. I will also probably just chump with Moloch for some life. All right. Double wasteland plus force of will. Pretty rough here. Send that in, I guess. Take two. I, I think I have to just combo on my next turn. Uh, this second wave of rhinos that's coming is going to beat me. If I think I'm never, like, living another turn cycle, I will just soak up some life here. Now I can activate multiple ancient tombs. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That is not going to do it. Um, I can cast this, be at 5, block 2 with this, take 6. If this painter dies, I think I'm just done. Uh, yeah, I, I will throw in the towel there. Uh, I think we can beat single wasteland, but single waste, or sorry, but double wasteland plus force is too much. All right, I want to close this video by talking about opportunity cost, which is something that we talked about recently on the podcast, so it's been trickling over into my daily videos here. So the opportunity cost of playing Life Force is not two bad cards in your deck. The opportunity cost of playing Life Force here is putting us into a third color. And if we are going to be in that color, then like we are doing other things that we normally would not do to kind of justify being in that color. And while all of these cards did various things throughout the league, you know, my artifact count was really low. I did not have four red artifact lands that are boosting this up. I did not have some of the normal silver bullets like Ensnaring Bridge to lean on. I did not have extra copies of Chaos Defiler that, you know, is a very powerful card if you hard cast it and if you start cheating it into play and recurring it, it's downright disgusting. And I like really felt the tension in sideboarding where like my artifact count was low, so these cards were worse than normal. And so like I'm incentivized to bring these out. I am happy with the, the sideboard that I put together, but I don't feel like the in-out numbers work with the secondary color here. And, like, if I start boarding out eight creatures and I bring in, like, two creatures, then, like, the breakouts are also just worse. Um, so the, the general idea of Life Force gets a thumbs down from me, but, like, we, we knew it was going to be bad from the time that I started recording. That is not a surprise. But I think... The ramifications on deck building were even worse than I thought they were going to be. You know, like I had five effective taigas in this deck, and then sometimes when we had life force, we still just did not have the green green because it is a secondary or tertiary color. Um, probably secondary, um, but like Chaos Defiler is quite important. So yeah, deck building costs of trying to do something cute are very real. And I hope this was still uh, entertaining. We, we gave it the good old college try, but um, trying to play something like Life Force is just too much of an uphill battle here. Folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. And should you need any magic cards, you know where to go. Use promo code THRAVENU to save 5% on your order. All right, see ya.